Hey, welcome back. You know what it is. This is that other deck. Didn't quite wrap it up last year. We ran into uh, problems at the sawmill getting our lumber, but we went to the Amish this year and that'll be done in a week or two. Pergola lumber. And then we'll put that up. We have a higher section in the middle, lower on either side here. Um, we're gonna do an arch like that sort of feature to tie that together. We've got the curved outside corner here. It's looking pretty good. Got some splitting, um, which is, you know, to be expected, I suppose. Uh, it looks black now, and we'll probably fill it with some of that um, roof and flashing sealer and then sand it off just to, uh, to keep it from collecting more uh, of the elements over time. And then I think we're gonna, uh, we're gonna stain this. Sorry, I kept trying to say sand. Uh, we're gonna stain this for her as well. And there's a little piece here that went rogue. Every once in a while, somebody just doesn't like to play by the rules, but today we're going to finish or try to get started finishing around that door. We're going to use plastic moldings. Uh, Azac, if you're familiar with that, or this is Royal. Uh, we're going to use the side that looks like textured, like raised grain wood. And we're going to go over that arch top, which is why we got three strips here. So an inch and a little under three sixteenths. We'll make thirds out of three and a half actual nominal one by four. So that'll measure three and a half wide now. And you notice when the cuts come back together again, you can completely lose, you can completely lose in that, in that texture, which is actually a technique used to curve most types of molding, even wood and stuff like that. Of course, you need a lot more than what you end up with. So like I got a one by six, so that I was sure to get three and a half inches out of it, considering kerf, etc. Um, so we'll probably we'll put the one piece over and I'll just put a pin nail in either end to hold it curved I'll load it up with PVC glue. I'll set the second one on pin it pin it into the wall Same on the third pin it pin it leave it to um, Actually at that point down from the top edge. I'm going to put three and a quarter inch or three and an eighth inch um, Trim head finish screws one every foot or so as well to combat the tension that's in there and then I'll just lightly lift it with a little pry bar off those pin nails that will hold it from straightening out but really not hard. it's not difficult at all to get to lift over the little tiny head on them I take that piece down um, because after I, that's after I plot the points on there too on the corners of the door I'll plot the points on it take it down put the appropriate angle cross cut starting at that little um, you know pencil line and then reapply it and then I can pull m numbers and put angles on the straight sides and bring them you know slide them up make sure the angles looking good make any tiny changes on it if necessary and not lose a lot of overall length and then shoot that on with nails and then caulk everything in with a nice quad from OSI white just to tie in all the inside corners outside corners nail holes I'll even do with that on this wood texture they say not to do it they say not to do it because they think that you're going to use white caulk on the white trim walk away call it white you can do it if you paint it all white don't do it if you're going to trust everything to stay the same tone because the caulk will grow mildew after a while and all those little holes will show up you know like that so anyway we will be doing that because we will be painting things white because wow well, the door's pre-finished I know glue in this is gonna make a mess. We're gonna have something from something imparted on it, dirt or debris. It's too much to ask. Oh, and this is a film, so it's printed, but that's in like a little like satisfying film to lift. I'm gonna do the gluing with it on and hope that it doesn't melt that film into something that doesn't see this is the thing. Now I'll pull the film before I put it up. But then you're dealing with the with the appearance face and any kind of glue overruns that you smooth off with your finger if your fingers got dirt and this glue's based in solvent and you just drag the dirt across the white face of it, we're gonna end up having to paint stuff. Um, so when I take it off and cut the ends on it, I probably leave it loose. Make sure the side pieces with the ends I put on them, the angles meet in well. Then I'll put them on sawhorses and spray them with white out here on the lawn. And then we'll put them up. Doesn't fix the nail holes. Got some thinking to do. I know that the pergola rafters we're gonna pre-finish. Probably get down to a point where we finished inside and out around the door, still waiting on the lumber order. We'll probably wash, brighten, and you know, clean wash, brighten, and uh, stain the deck and the posts way on up there, maybe just with a brush since that's pretty easy. And you haven't got to get around where all the um, 
um, beams are connected to them and brush all around that or spray up into the air. So we'll brush right up the posts. Then all the beams and joists, when we lay those out and process them, put the ends on them, put a bevel or treat the ends of them all around. We will also spray them all one side with stain, flip them, spray them the other side out here on the lawn. And then when they go up, they'll go up stained, which will limit how much masking we got to do on the house and how much dancing around underneath the stain raining down on top of us to look like we went and got a cheap tan by the end of that day. I think that's the smart thing to do. And in the middle there where we're killing time, we've got balustrade to make over here and fill in. And I think we're gonna fill in both sections all the way through here and all the way through there and put a, at least a stub railing on this. See, the, this will be walled off here, but that makes nice risers for plants and stuff. You're going to be doing this curve anyway. It's too sharp to turn here. It's awkward that the stairs end. I did that because that was 20 feet of lumber. That's as far as it went. Anyway, at least a stub out railing here. Perhaps one over there and over there. And uh, so we got that stuff to build. But everything else here held up really nicely. Uh, unfortunately, this tree is a type that has all these little fine seeds and seed stems from the flower seeds and the flower stems and all the little dried up that's the stuff that just laces itself together packs down into cracks like this and if you don't brush that every year or blast it with air it, it's it holds moisture and uh, becomes edible it's like tinder for the rotting process so it's real easy to rot because it has such great surface area for how tiny and feeble it is and then it provides an easy place for rot to begin and then it'll work on over into the lumber that your decks built out of and start working on your deck uh, like infection so you got to do debriding and then basically anyway not ideal but nothing a little regular maintenance wouldn't stay up on all right back soon all right this is going along no problem i put the first one on dry just pinned in there these are all 18 inch or uh, 18 gauge two inch brads just bang bend them all the way over to here, put one there. Just called it good enough. And we're going from like house wrap with sheathing to on top of the shingle. I was gonna prove out the front face of this and make sure it's nice and flush the whole way anyway. So it doesn't matter that we're not starting on an exactly perfect surface. Yeah, I thought about making a jig and copying this over to do all this on the bench, but it's like at the end of the day, not necessary. So then all I did was, I've been putting the glue, whoopsie, been putting the glue on these strips themselves rather than um, risking it getting onto the pre-finish of the door or anything else like that. You don't know what these solvents will do. They can get on top of this and the end of the post because it's going to be easy to sand or obscured with the rest of the construction. So I'll just get the dauber, try not to get drips headed down both edges if I can help it, all the way to one end and then strike through it back end to end when everything's wet just to freshen it up and make it wet again because it is trying to dry on me. And then I come over and start it with a brad into the wall again, bend it over, put another brad into the wall where it's tight. But then, as well as this here, I just managed the flushness, put it where I wanted it, and fired the two-inch brads down into the top edge. Um, right along, you know, and I've got drips of glue and stuff. This is going to get a cursory sand real quick before it gets painted. Anyway, it's working like a charm, and uh, we'll come back when we've got further. All right. Three strips, three rips, kicking through screws, making trips. Time to put some kind of angle on the two verticals as well as on the end of the curve that bisect this angle. Who knows how the hell to do that? Hmm, well, put the T or the speed right there, match the angle. That looks like. 30 would be there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Usually things are a relatively round number. And then I wish I could hold everything together, but say I put a straight edge on here and carried it over there, I could scribe it exactly through the point, and I'd have lines on both ends if I did the reverse over here. So I got a number to set the miter saw for the straight sticks and I got a line to be sure and be dead nuts on for the curve and then I could take it down, go do that on the bench, come back and everything ought to fit real nice. Meanwhile, I'll scribe these shingles while I'm up here. The rest I'll cut to fit, but since those were up there already and then those can be cut. Neat. All right.
right, well, we got the door trimmed. Three rips. Careful miters. Shims. Dialing this in. Caulk and paint will make it what it ain't. Got some dirt imparted up there. I was talking about. Some glue. Did some sanding. Covered up some nail holes. Various. Oh, and we got started with cedar shake. Um, the pack is really an underlayer pack. That's my high level of craftsmanship there. I'll fix that. But um, really, I need 100% clear. And I used, you know, everything out of the underlayer pack that had just, you know, I may even, I'm going to chuck this whole thing. He's been voted off the island. Um, anyway, I don't mind a little hole like that. It adds a little character. There's a couple on here. Uh, this is actually a really ugly job somebody did of shingling. Probably because there isn't plywood on there. That is a nice way to make it a nice flat surface. And then you can snap lines on. Now these lines go downhill. Uh, they don't, I don't know. Anyway, status quo. We're going to meet or exceed it. So we got that far with what was in the pack that's acceptable. I'm going to go out and get an ordinary clear top level pack of shingles so that they're to finish up. Those ones I put up with uh, face nailed last year with the uh, roofing nails, that's all I had. I'll replace those with um, some finished nails or something that's, um, I'll shoot those in with something that I can fill the nail holes with that OSI quad. Anyway, this little lip will return the clapped for us more um, professionally than just the thickness of the trim itself. And overall, the corners, when we paint that all out, now I did a color match with the door white, which you can see is a little bit warmer than the actual trim raw tone. Um, so we'll paint that out and we'll put some more shingles up and then we'll paint those. I think we made that color last year, that yellow. And then we will go inside and fix that up. And then our lumber should be ready for the pergola. And, uh, if we don't get there, I'm thinking I'm going to stain, wash, brighten, let it dry and stain the whole deck and up the posts. And then I can start working on the pergola lumber and when it's ready, we'll stain it on the sawhorses. And then it'll just be assembly like a kit. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. All right, we got the white paint on. I went from on the siding over the caulk, around the trim itself, and out onto the edge of the pre-finished door. Um, because I just felt like a natural line would be here on that shadow line to go from this white to that white. Instead of trying to cut white to white, that is a little easy. It's, a little, it's possible slightly to see it here now, but over time, whites change. And if I do a sloppy job because I can't see the difference between this white and the pre-finished white door now when you can hardly notice it and it weathers for a few years, the sloppy job's going to start showing up. And I've seen that time and time again. So I'm going to get two coats. This is the first coat. I'm going to get two coats of white from here all the way around and out to there. And then it'll break on the shadow line and the door is pre-finished. It's not quite exactly the same, but that is okay. Um, both as a rule of thumb and on this particular project. I slopped some onto the raw um, wood shake. There's rough areas and stuff like that. I'll sand those. Uh, showed me a couple pinholes that I didn't see and it'll make the color more correct when I put the yellow on there and it'll act as a primer. Um, it won't hurt that it's not technically primer. Primer is mostly just a cost-effective way to seal up or at least raw wood and drywall primer is a cost-effective way to seal up um, the surface. So any kind of paint will do. It's mostly just a save using paint in that application but here we don't want to go buy more primer we just bought one quarter paint and we use it as primer there uh and we got the drywall seams taped but board up one piece there managed to do the other piece in eight feet it was eight feet exactly from the inside corner of the wall to this seam here so um i actually opened both doors after I made a rectangle as big as I needed and slid it in here until it sat there. And then I scribed the wood jam. But of course, we're going to need to extend the jam out so that the edge of this is flush with the edge of the drywall, which it is not right now. Anyway, so I offset that an inch just by eye. And when I cut that line, I have the room that I need. And then the piece on the side was just filled in. And I saved myself digging apart the shoe and the baseboard there. This is going to be a drywall transition rather than not a drywall transition. But I just assume do it this way. Um, that's a personal choice, I guess. 
So taping is just rough. I did it with 45 minute hot mod. Um, that'll kick off here and I used icy cold water so it'll take half an hour um, to gel at least and it'll be done in an hour but still wet. Now I've got a few days I'm going to excavate tomorrow, then it's the weekend, then excavate Monday, then I'll be back Tuesday so it'll be nice and dry, powdery. You tell them, Rue. And we can do a cursory sand and then our first um, real coat of mud to try and finish this up. That's right. And we'll throw some paint on outside so that we're basically done on here. Got some questionable quality over here, but it's not our purview. All right. We're back at the tree deck, finally. I don't know if I'll show you this before or afterward, but we did this much and got the cover over the AC, and we got uh, Jeremy milled a bunch of these um, beams for us, did the jigsaw work on the ends and took a scallop out of the undersides of them here. But then all the rafters, I took that down to our friends at Braun Millwork, and they did that big scallop. Um, I think on the bandsaw or maybe with a router template but either way <coughs> so today we're trying to get beams up even though there are some rafters we're actually using the rafter as a lever because we had so much twisting like in this post here that we actually applied the rafter with through locks to that post which actually go into this aluminum kind of nut thing so everything's sandwiched rather than just relying on the screws in this post and then we could crank on this and if you can Sorry to make you dizzy, but you see the strap goes up and over and we went to the come along on the pickup truck in the driveway to pull on the middle of that. Cause once we went as far as we could go this way to this post and we stopped, it was still bowing away from us. So then we pulled it straight or even a little beyond straight to continue spinning that post, trying just get into where we needed. And so, like I say, we're over here and up and over just to get that done. But, um, <clears throat> which is the stuff that goes away and you don't see. It looks like we just threw this up and then threw that up and it went really smooth. Probably would have gone that smoothly if we were here the very next day after the last steps. But it's been almost a year since we were here last. So, things change in the humidity and the water. We'll fill these cracks like we did on the other party deck. And we're going to put a, a profile or a shape on the outside corner here. And I probably showed you how we got the outside of the door trimmed. Jeremy's going to take that up, and so here's another case of, I guess you want to be, yeah, on the outside of the post. And so then, we're actually almost an inch open here. And so, if we take the joist over until it can actually be stuck to this post, then we can go back that way with the other end and try to twist this guy, twist that gap shut, and screw it together. I was using ledge lock, which is a prettier but we'll probably end up using the through lock again with the aluminum nut just to pull that in tightly. We get everything put together here, all the rafters up, and then the sticks that go across them, the rafter, like almost like purlins, and everything's looking really nice and square. I may try to sneak around and replace the silver hardware with the black hardware, or I'll obviously at least paint the silver hardware black. So that's where we're at today. Let's see what this looks like in a little bit. Okay, we're back over here at the little tree deck which is actually quite large. Rue is rooting around. Uh, Jeremy's getting the cleaner washed off of everything here. Uh, and so to begin with, we get everything wet. You can do that with a hose or the pressure washer. Get it wet. And then I like to use TWP, which is total wood protection. It's a true exterior stain. You can get the OG stuff in some of the 50 states. You can get the 15, it's a 100 series. You can get the 1500 series in all 50 states because it meets EPA regulations. So I go with the 1500 series in New York State. <clears throat> I've had customers that went through the black market to get the 100 series for their project and I put it on there for them. I can tell you, you want a respirator and goggles when you put the OG 100 series on. It is extremely irritating to uh, mucous membranes. But I get a five gallon kit for a generally a good sized deck 
and uh, I use the Restora deck, so the TWP is the stain brand. I get a five gallon kit of it, plus the brightener and the cleaner. So they offer two different types of cleaner. This is Restora deck. This is the slightly cheaper um, brand of cleaner and brightener. So you get everything wet, you make up this with hot water, pump spray it onto everything. It's a little white and foamy at that point. Then you can cut, you can scrub that in or just remove it with the pressure washer, which is kind of equal, whichever way. And <clears throat> so you can kind of see it on there. There's a little bit of suds, very minimal. Uh, and then we use the brightener, which truly, like that gray to that before after, that's like seriously what it looks like. It's unbelievable. And it doesn't take very long at all. And so we'll wash off the cleaner. And then we'll follow the directions for the brightener directly with a pump sprayer. Treated the entire surface. Rinse with a garden hose. It's not necessary to scrub or use a pressure washer before you apply the brightener. Be certain all remaining gray areas of the wood have been removed with Restora Deck. So this here um, is where you want to get the old wood off with the pressure washer. So you want to follow the directions, but it's remarkably night and day difference here, where we've got like a, I would call it like a cover piece that sat in the sun, turned kind of silvery. It's real dark now, and the the stain color we're using is going to give it a little color, but the water is a good indicator of what it's going to look like. And you can see some of these are quite different than others. And so with the brightener, we'll equalize all of that. Of course, we've got to flip all these and use the cleaner on the other side too. I think we'll probably wash and brighten one side of all of these. And then we'll brighten, wash and brighten the other side, like right before we go or something. So he's working on the upper part there as soon as he's got that done. As soon as he's got the whole thing done here, I'll apply the brightener. I think we'll probably rinse off and stain her furniture too. It's a little worse for wear, but this it's got some, uh, it's very crispy. And the nice thing about the oil-based stains, rather than the paint stains, which are basically just paint and they're friggin' garbage, and I don't suggest anybody use them. But they'll give a little more life to these old crispy pieces that are, you know, easy to break like that. The oil will soak into that, the oil-based stain. They'll look a lot nicer. Um, and they'll live another year or two before they're total trash. And we'll, st we'll do everything, uh, we'll do the deck and everything first, but if there's anything left over, we'll use it up on a rattan furniture. And so this thing is, and then we'll put the rafters up stained, which is gonna be a lot easier than trying to pump spray and it blowing all over the house and stuff like that. It's gonna be hard enough, we're gonna have to mask from the bottom of those windows down and use the pump sprayer to get the posts and beams all uh, uh, stained, but um, <clears throat> that'll be just fine. Just trying to work smart here. We got enough beams up to straighten out these twisted posts last time. And so it's really starting to come in close to ready to stain here. It's just we can't be here every day and go uh, right along on it. So it's a little bit of stop and start. But uh, stay tuned.